Hey RC enthusiasts, RW down here in the shop. Going to do a little RC Guru bench talk about crawler tires, wheels, and foams and hubs. Going to try and cover the whole subject in about 10 minutes. And I'm going to try and save anybody who's just getting started in this hobby maybe a little legwork by showing you what you use and why. Okay. Um, there's a lot of options out there. I'm not going to go over any of the options. I'm going to talk about what I use and why. These are HB Rover white dots. These are relatively inexpensive tires that have a good rubber compound that works good in the wet or the dry. They can be used for rock crawling or just general trailing and they, they don't uh, hold mud so they're great mudding tires. They're just great all-around tires. This size tire is a 2.2 white dot HB Rover. This is what it looks like stock. Okay, It's fairly supple, fairly sticky. This is what it looks like after you've shaved the sidewalls to make them thinner and more supple. And the purpose behind this is to make the tire conform better and work better on the rocks. And it also squares off the tread. It squares so this is rounded and this is almost straight across. Okay. You'll notice that these tires are oriented. They have tread that ha has an orientation. Okay. That would be opposite each other. Same. Okay. When you're mounting tires, you're going to be doing fronts and rears separately. You're going to want to pair them. Okay. Now, the way that you run your tread is entirely up to you. You have to test it, see what works best for you and your terrain. But you're definitely not going to want one one way and one the other way. So, okay, that's tires. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is foams. Okay, you're going to want two-stage crawler foams. These are the foams that the, that the HB Rovers sh ship with. As you can see, they're a little bit smaller in diameter than the tire, and they are. Uh, a little wider than the tire. Okay, they are useless. Okay, notice that this foam is bigger and wider. This is a special kind of foam. This is from Proline. You can also check out Crawler Innovations on rccrawlerforums.com or just Google Crawler Innovations. They make amazing foams. These are memory foams. This is a dense one. I'm going to show you the action on it. Okay, This is a soft one or a less dense one, however you want to think of it. This is considered medium, this is considered soft. Faster acting, puffier, slower. Okay, For the rears, this is what you want for the rears. Okay, This is, this is going to work the best for you. And this is what you want for the fronts. Okay, I can explain about that as I go along. But first, just let me show you how you go about installing a foam in a tire, okay, so in case you've never done it and you just would like to know. Okay. The little gray ring is not memory foam. It's regular dense foam. It's slightly smaller, so you want to center it. Okay, get it about centered. Okay, then you want to you want to fold it and fold it and squeeze it. Okay? And then you want to insert it in the tire. Like this. Just pop it right in there and let it unfold. Right? After you get it in there, use your fingers and go around and around and around and around and around like this to make it work its way of little ripples and kinks or whatever they're in. Make sure it's centered. Okay, now you're good to go. If you've already mounted a tire, see which way you got to orient the, the tread. Okay, so in this case, I know I want my outside of my rim over here, of my wheel over here. Now I want to talk to you real quick about this. This is a Vanquish Products SLW rim, one inch. These are awesome. They are super light. Contrary to what you may think when you first start crawling, you don't want any weight at all in your wheels. You don't want any rotating mass if you can help it. You want everything to be light. So this is the way to go. Okay, Pop that baby in there. Now, the way you get these to go on is you poke it all the way to one side and you feed that L-shaped rubber flange, the bead, into 
the groove, and that's why I love the SLWs. No fighting with doing that. You don't need to use dish soap. You don't need to do any kind of crazy acrobatics. You don't need any special tools. It just goes in there. But what you do want to make sure is, is that you're not trapping any foam between the rim of the wheel and the rubber of the tire. You want it to be able to go flat all the way down. One rim is going to be for the back. And one rim is going to one of these beadlock rings. I'm sorry, not rims, rings. This is the back one. Okay, you line it up with the holes. Okay, put in three screws. Then you go around to the other side. You push it all the way out. Okay, and you do the exact same thing. You make sure that the bead goes into the groove. No problem. You then put your ring over top of that little detent in your tire. You get the holes to line up. And you massage it right into that groove, just like that. Then you put screws in it. If you've done it correctly, it looks like this. You won't see any gap between the tire and the bead locking ring. It won't, it'll look perfectly even all the way around. And this is what it makes the tire look like. And this is how it makes the tire perform. This is the medium for the rears. So as you're going up, it'll bite into that rock, ripple up, and regain its shape as it comes along. And it won't push you off of the surface. It gets more bite. Okay, so we can skip this part. We know that. Now I want to talk to you about hubs. Now, Vanquish sells SLW hubs. And they sell them in different offsets. What an offset is, is the distance from the back here, of your, this is your face, distance from the back to here. And you may want no offset. You may want a lot of offset. It depends on your setup. So you may have to buy a bunch of different hubs to find out when you're testing. You'll be buying all these SLW hubs and you'll be checking this one, oh, this three, the 380 didn't work, oh, let's try the 750, you know. Or you can buy these Lattice Innovations shifts. These are awesome. I love these things. You don't have a hex. It doesn't use a hex. It goes right on the pin on the axle. It sockets right over the pin. And how it attaches okay, is it goes right on the SLW hub and you screw it down with screws. Now they ship with, this is 12 holes, they ship with 6 of the holes done at 440. And six of the holes open, blank, so you could tap them to whatever. I've tapped mine to M3, and I use M3 to put it together. What I've done is I've taken M3 button head screws, I've put them in my cordless drill, and I've touched them to my belt sander, which you could also use a file. And I've just run the head down until the head will fit in this little space. This is perfect for a socket head machine screw, like a 440 socket head machine screw or an M3 socket head machine screw would fit in there just fine. I didn't have those, so I made some. You don't need to do that, you can just get the right thing. What I want to show you about the Shifts Innovation Hubs, Lattice Innovation Hubs, is that they're provided with these extremely nice, super dense Delrin rings. That gives you the chance to build as much offset as you need or as little offset as you need or you can put a ton of offset on there you could go crazy it's all about however long your machine screw is for me, for my offset, I like to use one thick and one thin front and rear that's the offset I'm using Okay, and I will show you real quick how that goes on, just so it's not some huge mystery. Okay, you put, I like to put three screws through, and I put my thumb over it, okay. and then I take a spacer, and I get that to go on it, and I put another spacer, and I get that to go on it. Oh, I missed. Okay, then 
With these, I have little marks to tell me which one of mine are M3, so I don't screw up any threads. Ta-da! See how simple that is? And this means you can tune this anytime you want. You could take your wheel off and throw another shim on, or take a shim off, and test out your offset while you're out there crawling. And I really, I really think that that pretty much covers what I think is a real optimal setup for rock crawling. Alright guys, here we are back up at the house. Everything's put back together. And the last thing I wanted to mention was venting. Okay. A little hole right there I've made. Made a hole on either side on all of the tires so that the air can get out and they can do what they're supposed to do. Deform and come back. Just to show you the difference between the front and the rear. I'm going to push down on the front. You can see that it comes back pretty fast. And you push down on the rear. You can see it's a lot slower. And that's basically it. That's a wrap. I appreciate you guys uh, checking out this little guru talk on tires, wheels, foams and hubs. I hope you found it useful. Uh, leave a comment. If you like this sort of thing, subscribe to my channel. And uh, you can always hit that like button.